Hello beautifuls, this is Romy here, and welcome back to Prank Master's Demo. Um, last episode, I think, uh, I, I quite don't, <laughs> I honestly don't remember, I recorded this on August 1st, and today's August 7th, so let's actually start, I think this demo is about to end, honestly. Uh, yeah, yes, I, I want to load this section. Let's go to the park, as promised. But she keeps standing in front of her locker, her eyes closed as if she's in a deep spell of thought. It's a bit concerning. Are you okay, Cat? You don't remember? Of course I remember. We're supposed to be going to the park today, right? She opens her eyes. They give me nightmares. Okay. Now I'm confused. Nightmares? When I sleep in, I have nightmares. Cat. Are you sure you're okay? I'm myself. When I don't say anything, her lips lift into a small smile. Don't worry, you just spoke to my other self. Other self? Did I scare you? No, I wouldn't say that I was scared. Well, what you saw before is a normal thing for me, so don't worry about it. Okay, if you say so. <laughs> I don't even know what she means. Um, excuse me, do you know where E26 is? Oh, there's the other chick that we're supposed to find out. I turn around and see a girl with long wavy golden locks that gracefully fall down on her back. This seems more like a Juliet. Sorry, I just started here. I don't really know the layout. Uh, really? I just transferred here too, this morning to be precise. Actually, that my voice is better. I should give at least the blonde chick some voice because we've been so far with my normal voice for everybody else. So, welcome to Cliff and High. Thank you. E26 is a music room. If you head straight ahead, you reach the cafeteria. Turn right, and you'll be on your way, on your way to E Block. So I go straight, then turn right. Yes. I think I've got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Kat and I watch the girl depart on her way as she heads through the doors. Her long hair is jostled by a small breeze, making it glide elegantly behind her. When I turn back to Kat, she's staring at me rather intensely. Is there something in my face? No, I just think that you and that girl look rather alike. Nah, I'm nothing like her. Kat keeps looking at me for a few moments. Let's go to the park then. I head to the park with Cat, walking my bicycle along one, on one side, while talking to Cat on the other. Eventually, I reach a large oak tree in the middle of the park. Is Hero King? I watch as Cat spreads a picnic mat out of the base of the tree. Here is perfect. She smiles, observing the strong trunk of the tree, shading us with its gentle branches. It has beautiful energy. Energy? All right, it's time for the cards. She claps her hands and takes a long wood wooden box out of her bag. Sorry for that, sounded awkward. I'm trying to crack my bed, uh, bed, back, twisting my body, but it's not working. I usually need like someone to like hug me, kind of thing, and yeah, well, pressing against my back, yeah, breaking the bones, totally. I've known Cat for nearly a week, and she rarely makes sudden movements. Clapping her hands like that just means that she's really excited for this. Cat opens the box carefully to reveal a deck of tarot cards. She takes them out and begins to shuffle them with her eyes closed. Are those tarot cards? She nods slowly. I made them a while ago. She, you, you what? You made them? Look in the cards closely. You can tell that she's put a lot of time making them. How did you make them? And again, I don't remember what tarot cards look like. The back of the cards look like it was made of real wood. Elegant lines form a vine. Vine-like pattern over the texture. Texturing. Texture. You're really artistic, cat. Thank you. I use these cards because they work better than tarot cards from elsewhere. <laughs> Random hiccup burp thing. I don't know what they call those. At least they work better with my senses. I see. Do you mind shuffling the cards 17 times for me? What if I accidentally damage them? She quickly chuckles and gives me a gentle smile. 
That won't happen. I'm sitting right in front of you. So if you do damage them, I'll just curse you on the spot. <laughs> she says that so nonchalantly. Just kidding. I won't do anything to you. She sure knows how to make someone nervous. I take the pile of cards from her and start to shuffle them. Do you know why I asked you to do this 17 times? Because she's 17 years old? I shake my head, half listening as I count the shuffles. It's because you're 17 years old. See, I knew it. 13, 14. I knew that. Of course you did. 17. I place the cards back down in the center of the map. There. So if you're predicting for someone who is 200 years old, would they shuffle the cards 200 times? There's different methods for different age groups. That's good. I really can't imagine myself being that old and having to shuffle the cards that many times. I think my wrist would probably fall off. <laughs> you're... Yeah. Okay, you're funny, Chili. Cat picks up the cards with a smile. She closes her eyes for a few moments, then halves the deck decisively. She puts one half on the mat and keeps the other in her hands. Take three cards from that deck. I do so and put them down on the mat next to each other. Cat flips the first card on my left and we both look at it in silence. On the card there is a picture of a blue sky with clouds, fluffy and white. But there is also an angel falling from the sky, her wings disintegrating around her. Fallen. I look at the cursive golden letters on the card. Fallen. That doesn't sound like a good thing. Cat doesn't say anything and flips the next card. A dark shadowy figure stands at the center of the card with a hood covering his eyes. Death. Dropping my gaze to the word, under the picture, Cat reads the title of the second card. Dark. Fallen. Dark. She narrows her eyes slightly, probably trying to make a connection between the two cards. But as I wait for her lips to move, she keeps quiet and moves on to the third and final card. Honestly, I don't usually think much of this stuff. But after meeting Kat, I think some of her interesting in her some of her interest in, in fortune telling and aura reading has rubbed off on me. Trap, fallen dark trap. That's the title of the final card. I have a feeling these cards don't mean anything good. Carefully examining the image on the card, there is a girl concealed within an hourglass, probably trying, oh, probably taking her last gasp of air. Fallen dark trap. What are the, <laughs> what are they supposed to mean? Her facial expression begins to change. You will fall from the highest peak and down to a place with no light. You will not be able to escape unless you're with. I really don't understand what she's saying, but it feels like she's at herself again. With what? What was once lost and now found? I seriously have no clue what she's talking about. Cat? There's a long pause before she snaps out of her date. When you look at all the cards at once, uh, all the cards as one, they hint towards what will happen in your future. So how am I going to avoid it? Truthfully, you won't be able to avoid it completely. You'll probably run into at least one of at least one of the cards. In the worst case scenario, you run into all three of them. But of course your decision will change the way the way how these three words will affect you. What about the lost and found thing? What's that all about? That is something that my other self said, so I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know, don't ask me, ask my other half that is left at home apparently. The only person who would know what it means is you, Julie. I'm utterly wordless. I don't know how to react to this kind of thing. I guess that's all for today. All this predicting is making me hungry. Do you want some cupcakes before we go home? Cupcakes again? Julie? Uh, sure. I hop off my bike, steer it to the side of the house, and chain it to the fence. As I unbuckle my helmet, I notice that both my parents' cars are in the driveway. That's weird. Mom and Dad are really home at this hour. Dad took a few days off from work to let his ankle heal, but he was meant to be going back today. Don't tell me something happened to him again. I don't even bother getting my keys out of my pocket and just press a doorbell instead. That must be Julie. Juliet, sorry. 
I hear muffled no voices inside. Do you mind getting door, Mister Door for Miss Hayes, dear? I hear a lady's voice, which I assume is one of Mum's friends. We have guests today. <laughs> the voice is vaguely familiar. It's probably one of Mum's friends. She must be too busy preparing snacks to get the door. As the door opens, I get ready to give my most genuine hello. Hello, Miss. My hand stops mid-wave. This person's not even a miss, in fact. This person is the exact opposite of a lady, and he is most certainly not the age to be a mother in the first place. It's him. What are you doing here? I point at none other than the ice pack stealer, my eyes wide enough to be seen from Mars. He looks just as stunned as, <laughs> as me for a second, but then that face is replaced by a cheeky smile. Hi, I'm your guest today. Nice house you've got here. Okay, this doesn't make any sense. With a vice-like grip on my school bag, I close the door behind me. Sitting by the sofa is, sing is the exact same lady I saw when I borrow I gone to borrow an ice pack. I give it up. <laughs> given my odds to temporarily forget that the ice pack stealer is under my roof and greet her with a friendly smile. Hi, Miss Jones. Oh, hello, dear. We meet again. She approaches me and wraps me into an embrace. I awkwardly hug her back. Who would have thought that your mother and I are now neighbors? I've known Mary since we were in high school. Oh, Stephanie, don't go and start telling stories about our high school life. Miss Jones laughs heartily. I know, I know. Their eyes will already be glazed over by the time I finish my first sentence. I glance over to the kitchen and see my mom chuckling to herself while cutting cheese. Miss Jones looks at me and then makes eye contact with Ice Pack Stealer. This is my son, Romeo. Hi, nice to meet you. He greets me and holds out his hand. Is he pretending to not know me? I try to go with it, I take his hand into my own and force, the sm force a smile. Oh, I'll show you how much I don't know you. The pleasure is all mine. I beam back at him. Though while we shake, I give him a slight squeeze to show how very overjoyed I am to see him in my house. He tries not to react and smiles back, but I'm able to capture the slightest furrowing of his brow. That's enough to satisfy me for the moment. Once his hand is free, he hides it behind his back. He's probably shaking it to ease the blood flow. Served you right. Now that the introductions are done, let's go and eat. Go and get ready for barbecue. Romeo, I think your dad and Mr. Hayes will be needing your help with the gas bottle. They've been monkeying with it for a while now. We're having barbecue with ice pack stealer? To be honest, I don't hate the idea of having a barbecue with neighbors. Every time we move house, my parents are magically able to find some friends that they used to know and invite them over for a nice dinner. I take a moment to look over Romeo's parents. Mr. and Miss Jones. With a single glance, I already tell that they are genuine and kind people. Problem is, whenever my eyes land on Romeo, I'm taken back to that muddy incident on my first day of school. Seriously, it makes my eye twitch every time I think about it. I probably look <laughs> rabid or something. Sure, Mom. Reaching the glass door, he sends me a glare before stepping into the backyard looking at me like you mother of her. Out of all the possibilities, why does he have to be my neighbor? Mom comes out from the kitchen and puts a plate full of crackers with cheese, ham, and tomato toppings onto the coffee table. Have some, Stephanie. I hope the crackers are to your taste. You didn't need to do all this. We're going to eat later on. Oh, it's nothing. It's already done. Go on. Okay, then. Thank you. Juliet, do you mind finding some aprons from the storage cupboard upstairs? I think the boys will need it for the barbecue. Okay, give me a sec. As soon as I place my bag in my bedroom, change out of my school uniform, I set about finding the aprons. It takes me a while, but eventually I get them. They have been tucked away on the top shelf, making them almost impossible to see. I had to climb onto a chair to get them. I come out to the backyard to find Mom and Miss Jones making a potato salad while the boys stand by the girl. Since she's busy mixing, Mom tells me to also, to also bring out the tablecloth for the outdoor table. She said it's in the cupboard near the sink. Why can't I find it? Juliet, do you know where the tongs are? I lift my head to see Dad looking around the kitchen helplessly. I think it's in one of those drawers over there. 
I really have no idea where anything in the kitchen usually is. I just happen to know where the tongs are since I use them often. Not for cooking purposes. For pranking. Ah, uh, found it. Thanks, sweetie. You're welcome, Dad. Alright. I grab the aprons from where I dropped them next to me. Mom said you and Mr. Jones might need these. And there's one for our ice pa I mean, Romeo as well. Dad takes the aprons from my hand and raises an eyebrow at me with a something is fishy expression. But he quickly relaxes his shoulders and shrugs the thought away. I almost forgot. Do you know where the spatula is? Second drawer. Found it. Thanks again. You're welcome. Again. <laughs> Dad's footsteps fade away in the backyard. Whew. That was close. Jeez, where on earth is a tablecloth? Sometimes mom organizes things so that I can't even find them. Footsteps enter the kitchen kitchen once more. I lift my head and my roll my eyes. Dad, what do you need now? I glance up and meet eyes with ice packs dealer. Okay, this just got awkward. I look away and go back to searching the cupboard. Do you know where the plates are? They should be in the top cupboard to your right. I hear him open the cupboard, but he quickly closes it. They're not there. They're there, trust me. They're not. Where? Let me see. I stand up and he shows me the empty, empty cupboard. He's right. It's not there. That's weird. Mom always put the plates in the upper right cupboard. Frustrated that he's right, I randomly open one of the cupboards near me and find them. How many plates do you need? Six. No, make that seven. Seven. But there's only Mr. and Ms. Jones, my parents, him and myself. That only makes six of us. Why seven? I'm expecting another guest. I take seven plates and place them on the table behind us. Just as Ice Pack Stealer picks up the plates, the doorbell chimes. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Juliet, can you open the door from Romeo's cousin? I have sticky hands at the moment. Romeo's cousin? Okay. And, and who is this? <laughs> when I open the front door, my mind is nearly launched into orbit. Oh my god. K kidnapper? What? Ice pack steel and kidnapper are cousins? That actually explains a few things. Oh yeah, it does. It explains the brown hair that I questioned. Hello. Thank you for letting me come over. And now it's kidnapper's turn to be left speechless. He was pretty cute though. I think he's like my all-time favorite guy right now. But he shakes out his stupor faster than I do and puts on his smirk. Rosa, what are you doing here? Um, I don't know. This is my house. Oh, how come you're invited? I'm temporarily living with my uncle and my aunt, so naturally I was invited along. Juliet, why are you keeping our guests outside? Sorry, Mom. We're, we were just having a little talk. Turning back to Kidnapper, I narrow my eyes and reluctantly gesture for him to come inside. Come in. Juliet. Wait, your name is Juliet? Jeez, just come in already, will you? Kidnapper finally steps inside and I quickly shut the door behind him. Ignoring him, I start back to the kitchen. Hey, I'm talking to you. Why aren't you answering my questions? I lower my voice and signal for him to be <laughs> to quiet down. For your information, my name is Juliet, so stop griping about it. You're starting to sound like an idiot. I can't believe you lied to me. I'm hurt. You're the one who didn't believe me when I told you my name was Juliet in the first place. He opens his mouth to say something, but I just turn on my heels and storm back to the kitchen. I mean, it was true he didn't believe her, but you would believe that your cousin's named Romeo. Mom, I can't find a tablecloth. Where did you say it was again? It's in the lower right cupboard next to the basin. Didn't you say that it was in the lower left cupboard before? I did? Sorry, sweetie. That explains why I couldn't find a tablecloth. Mommy, why? <laughs> I can hear Kid Number's footsteps behind me as I open the cupboard, but they stop suddenly. Um, uh, what did the vet say? He said it was just a bit of digestive problems, but he's fine now. He's sleeping at home. That's relief. That sounds like something serious. I wonder what they're talking about. But who cares about them? I've got what I came for. Taking out taking out the blue pattern fabric, I close the cupboard and stand. 
The eyes of both of my previous harassers trained themselves on me. The faces they wear are easy enough to read. They think I was eavesdropping. <laughs> Timer stop. <laughs> and we are gonna save it right here. I was totally not eavesdropping. I'm pretty sure we're talking about a pet though. Because he said the vet. So it's probably like a pet doggy. Most likely it's gonna be a dog. Because mm, mm, cats are famous too in mangas and animes. But I think it's gonna be a puppy. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. Stay beautiful and I will see you guys next time.